G'day, g'day. It's Dicker and welcome to Wicked Wildlife. And today, we're gonna to talk about this little fella here, who's a lizard that's not supposed to be here. And that is the Asian house gecko. So stick around, guys. So as the name might suggest, the Asian house gecko is native to Southeast Asia. But these guys have an amazing ability to survive sea voyages and cargo. And today, they're found in Central and South America, parts of the United States, parts of Africa, the Middle East, and the vast majority of Northern Australia. These guys were first found in Australia around Brisbane in Queensland in about the 1960s. And just like the rest of the world, it's believed they got here in shipping. Some of the things that help these guys survive these long sea voyages that a lot of other animals might not be able to do is the fact that this particular species is able to go into brumation, sort of like a semi-hibernation. On top of that, these guys can mate and actually store sperm for up to 36 weeks. So only a single female is needed to get to another country to start up an entire population. Once these guys reach the new destination, these guys lay two eggs at a time, like most geckos, but they can actually have two eggs ready to lay and two eggs already fertilized that I suppose are further down the, uh, the escalator line. So these guys can produce large numbers in pretty quick succession. So they're really good colonizers. Since they arrived in Brisbane, these guys have spread to pretty much all the suburban and city areas across Northern Territory, North Queensland and parts of Western Australia. This species is really well adapted to live in human disturbed areas, just like the caravan park here. Now, there's little to no information suggesting that they're currently posing a risk to any of our native geckos, but there has been at least two species of reptile mites introduced on this species of gecko, and they've also been recorded to carry at least one intestinal parasite. That, if these guys start colonizing further away uh, from human development and into the forest, could potentially pose a risk to some of our native gecko species. So the other thing that these guys are particularly famous for, other than sitting under the lights at the caravan park and lapping up insects, is their variety of different vocalizations that they make. The first one is a long chirp which is sort of a, an intimidation tactic. Two males will use it when they're facing off at each other with gaping mouths and make this long call to scare the other one off. The second one is a distress chirp. So it's one short, sharp chirp that a male will do basically to signal defeat, or they'll do if they're handled roughly, or a predator grabs them or something like that. So a distress call. And the third one is a series of short chirps, which is a territorial call. And this is what people hear in the night as you go around caravan parks and built up areas in Northern Australia. And that's them calling from uh, a distance to tell other males that they're around. They particularly do it around mating, when, before or after they've mated, or when they've caught something to eat. It's their way of saying, stay away. This is my area, leave me alone. So here in Australia, we've got a huge variety of introduced animals from cane toads to feral horses to foxes and rabbits. But this is one that a lot of people, particularly down south, probably don't know we've got or that is introduced from other countries. That being said, in the scheme of invasive species so far, there's very little information to say that these guys are a real threat. And considering that they like to eat the bugs in their house, potentially they might lessen the amount of poisons and things that we use. So he's probably here to stay, whether we like it or not. These guys have just become a part of Northern lifestyles. Now, I hope you enjoyed meeting this little uh, Asian house gecko here today. And if you have enjoyed watching our video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like us on Facebook. And if you want to help us travel around more and visit more animals and different facilities and show you some other critters that I couldn't show you back home, uh, please check us out on Patreon, where your contribution can help us do just that. Make our videos bigger and better every single week. Following that, I'm going to let this fellow on go. He can find some bugs when it gets dark in a few hours. Thanks for watching. Be nice to wildlife and see you next week.